Both these AI are doing the same thing, but one of them is running on blueprints and the other is using a behavior tree. So can you guess which is which? If you got that right, leave a comment and tell me what you think you saw, because I'm convinced that was pure luck. To me, there's almost no difference on the surface. I made these prototypes so I could figure out if behavior trees were the best way to make enemy AI, but I ended up learning how divisive behavior trees are in the game development community and for good reason. So I divided the perspectives I encountered into three groups based on who was providing the opinion. Uh, the first one is Epic Games because I use Unreal Engine. Second one is the game development community uh, who contribute to forums or write blogs or make videos like this one. And the third one is the professionals, mainly Bobby Engeloff. I apologize if I butchered that name, but he designs AI and games for a living and he just happens to have a ton of material on this. Naturally, this video required a ton of research. So I linked every single video, blog, article, forum that I looked at, and they're all down in the description. So you can check my work, check my research. I'll do my best to refer to specific sources as we go along, but there's a lot of them. So let's just start with Epic Games. I think Epic makes their stance very clear as this is directly from their documentation. You can use blueprint visual scripting to instruct a character to do something such as plan animation, move to a specific location, react when being hit by something, and more. When you want AI characters to do their thinking and make their own decisions, this is where behavior trees can help. So, blueprints are great for instructing, but behavior trees are better for thinking. This makes sense given that the I in AI stands for intelligence. I'd want a system that gives my pawns decision-making capabilities. But I need to understand why Epic thinks they're great. So I kept digging and I found some decent reasons. The first one being because they're efficient. Behavior trees are event driven, meaning they passively listen for events that can trigger changes instead of checking for changes every frame. If a variable changes that triggers a high priority event, behavior trees can handle it better than other methods. Being event driven also allows for behavior trees to have a priority hierarchy in which lower priority tasks can be aborted in favor of higher priority ones. Now efficiency is great, but as a solo developer, I don't always care about efficiency. Sometimes I just want to make something that works as easy as possible. So are behavior trees easy to use? Well, it depends on who you ask. I like them because they come with a handful of functionalities already included, like rotating to face a target, moving to a specific location. And they also come with these special types of blueprints called task decorators and services that are fairly simple to create and you can do a lot with them. They're pretty versatile. Visually, it's easy to tell the sequence of events that are happening in a behavior tree with these little numbers that are attached to each node. Every behavior tree comes with an asset called a blackboard that you can use to store important variables and values that your behavior tree will need to reference as it runs. Also, behavior trees are designed specifically for AI. Therefore, you're kind of forced to uh, structure them as if they're for AI, which just makes them easier to understand. All that seems great, but if behavior trees are divisive, there has to be some downsides, right? Well, the game dev community, about uh, half the game dev community on forums that I read point out that there's a belief that behavior trees are the silver bullet to solving all your AI development issues, and that's just not the case. Their limitations become apparent with complexity. As tasks become more complex, behavior trees become just too rigid to function in ways that we expect them to. Let's say we have an enemy character whose highest priority is to stay away from the player. Its second priority is to fire projectiles at the player, and its third is to find cover. If we wanted to add a special condition where if this enemy is within a certain distance of a player, but more enemies are nearby, just hide behind those enemies. Trying to implement something like this would cause prioritization issues because the behavior tree structure is too rigid. Sometimes using a behavior tree can be like using a penny to remove a screw. It's possible, but it's definitely not optimal. So if behavior trees aren't the ultimate solution, 
What is? In studying some industry professionals, I found I've just been asking the wrong question because what I'm trying to make should influence how I'm going to make it, which means I need to understand AI a little better. So let's dive in. Games are full of different types of AI that require different levels of intelligence and knowledge about the game world. In studying Bobby's material, I learned AI itself can be divided into three layers. There's sensing, deciding, and actualizing, meaning the AI can sense something about its environment, make a decision based on that information, and then execute the action it's decided to do. Ideally, developers should not combine any of those layers. Also, the types of AI I'm trying to make need to have different capabilities in each of those layers. A simple grunt who just sees a player and attacks does not need to have much capability in the sensing and decision-making realms. However, a more complex enemy that takes things into account like positioning or ally numbers needs to have a lot more capability in those areas. Turns out behavior trees are great for making reactive AI systems, meaning AI systems where the AI just gathers information about the state of the world and reacts to it. But what keeps them from being great at making more complex AI systems is that they blend the decision and actualization layers into one mechanism, which causes prioritization issues when it comes to making uh, decisions based on multiple variables. This means if I want my AI to make complex decisions, behavior trees are going to be too rigid. So I'll need to find a new solution. Luckily, behavior trees and blueprints aren't the only options that we have. Um, some of the ones that I don't hear as much chatter about are decision trees, um, state machines, and there's a new one called state trees in Unreal Engine 5. Maybe after I study those, I'll do a video on those ones. So having heard the good and the bad, what do we do with all this information? One thing I heard the pros frequently say is they're not telling anyone how they should be making games. They're just pointing out things that we as developers need to be aware of. And that's the point. Every game is unique and every developer is only capable of what they can do. We just have to use the tools we have to the best of our abilities, then study and improve as we go. This isn't an exact quote, but I heard another professional with a lot of experience at Blizzard, I believe his name is Thor from Pirate Software. He said something along the lines of, all games are janky. If we could see under the hood of the greatest games ever made, you'd find a lot of jank. So it's okay if your game is janky too. All that matters is that it works and people are enjoying it. So keeping that in mind, it really doesn't matter how you make AI in your games. You just gotta do the best that you can and keep learning and growing as you go. While I wish there was a definitive path to, to doing things the, the right way in, in game development, there's just not. All we can do is do the best we can. That being said, if you wanna see some fairly janky moving platforms, check out this video here. Happy devving, y'all.